TPO Rankings. Hello and welcome back to the TPO Ranking Show and Podcast. Uh, I'm joined by my older brother, Jake. Jake, how are you going this evening? Doing well, Cody. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, doing well. We are not on purpose, but we're wearing the same jerseys this, this evening. We've both got, well, different jerseys, but um, the same club, AC Karina. Yep, you've got the away jersey there and I've got the the home. Um, there's a third special kit, Cody. One of us will have to bring that out one week. Mm, I think I've got it in my in a box over there somewhere, so <laughs> maybe another week. But um, all right, Jake, so we've got plenty to run through now. Most of the MPLs are sort of uh, either started or about to start and uh, we've just sort of got to fit it all in, in and try and keep these episodes down to a you know a minimum. Uh, don't want to be going on too long. We'll lose our audience. And uh, you'll lose me as well, as I mentioned just before we hit record. Pretty tight over here, Jake. So let's just jump right in, and we'll get it done. see how we go. And we probably won't touch on um, every league at this point and every result and whatnot. But we'll we'll see how we go this week and, and make adjustments going forward. So, Jake, I said last week we're going to mix it up a little bit the order. So I'm starting with Queensland this week. There's only three games due to the the wet weather up here. Um, the first of which Lions and Brisbane Raw drew to all, which I thought would be a close game. I was you were going to go to that one, Jake, but you didn't end up. I think you watched it online instead. Yeah, and it was uh, with the rain about. It was risky going out to any games, um, even though, like I said, it, it did end up going ahead. But watching on the stream, I did see some rain coming down, and um, Lions Ground does have some undercover area, but where I'd like to sit is mm. definitely not covered. So ended up watching online. Um, and uh, from what I could see, I thought it was probably a reasonable result. Um, Brisbane Royal Youth Team were, were well up for it. Yep. Uh, Gold Coast Knights spanked Magpies 4-0. And Olympic got a great result away from home. I thought it was going to be closer against Morton Bay, but they got up 4-1. So uh, Olympic sit top of the table, the only team to win uh, three. Oh, no, that's a lot. Hang on. That says nine points. I think my – oh, no, that's a seven. I was reading it wrong. Yeah, Olympic, the only team to win three from three, seeing top of the table. Um, Jake, this year there are you three teams. Just to, you oh, did yep. you did uh, skip over, though, one of the uh, – and we're going to get into this, but Peninsula Power, two from two, just because they had their game watched no, out. Yeah, so yeah. there is that other – one other side that Caveat. can match them. Of course. Um, Jake, this year I believe there's three teams being relegated because there's a they're evening out the leagues. Uh, there's 14 at the moment. Uh, quickly, who do you think will be the three teams to go down? Oh, it's a tough one this early, but um, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll give you three. I think you could probably name four or five, and and be pretty mm. confident in getting three of those. Um, but I'm gonna go with uh, Magpies. I think, as I mentioned this before, as a regional side um, who didn't play at all because of COVID last year, I think they'll struggle. Um, I'm going to actually say Redlands as the second one. They've avoided it a couple of years in a row now just. And as a bit of a dark horse, I'm going to say Brisbane Strikers. Mm. I agree on you on most of those. I don't think Strikers will go down. I think Capalaba will, will go down instead of Strikers. Okay. But otherwise, yeah, we'll see though. Um, okay, on with uh, – I suppose we'll touch on – Jake, What we'll just pick out your game of the round for the for each um, uh, MPL. So what's your game of the round this, this week? Um, so Queensland's game is a pretty easy pick, really. It's Olympic FC versus Peninsula Power. Um, and for obvious reasons, they're the two that are, like you mentioned, Olympics three from three, Power uh, two from two, and some of the highest ranked clubs in the in the state. And right now, I would probably say they're the two strongest um, in the competition. Uh, we'll see if that continues, but that's they're probably my two picks for the uh, grand final at this stage. Fantastic. Jake, we're going to the west uh, of the country, Western Australian MPL, which saw the opening round there. Um, Sorrento beat Coburn City 3-2. Inglewood United beat Armadale 4-1. Bayswater beat Rockingham City 3-0. Perth uh, Soccer Club and Perth Glory, the youth team uh, there, 2 all. Florida Athena, champions of last year, beat Balcata 2-1. And ECU June Dallop uh, beating Croatia 2-1 away from home. Uh, Jake, have you picked the game out for the coming weekend? No, nothing that I've wanted to highlight. I think um, I, I need to see another couple of rounds just to mm. see who the strong sides are. Um, I've, I've lost a bit of touch with the Western Australian League from last year, but it looks to me like most of the games 
like you, you said, there was five um, games that ended up with a result, like a, a winner and a loser, and then there was one with the draw last week. The five winners seem to, for the most part, be playing at one of the other teams that lost as well. So there's no kind okay. of matchups of um, you the know, two winning teams. two sides near the top. So um, yeah, nothing in particular. I think there's a few interesting games, and it'll you know Sorrento Guelop from a rankings point of view, both ranked quite closely. That's probably the the one if I had to pick one. Okay, New South Wales and uh, obviously heavy, heavy rain down that that part of the world or that part of the country. Um, there were three games that went ahead. Mount Druitt Town Rangers drew one all with Sydney Youth. Rockdale won all with Manly, in which um, I didn't watch any of these games, but that, that would have been my pick. Um, although this game also uh, would have been entertaining. Sydney United, 4-1 winners over Blacktown City. Sydney United absolutely killing it. Um, four wins from four um, with a goal difference of plus nine. So... They're doing really well, Jake. Uh, I want you to give me as quick can I, as you before can. You, before you ask me the question, okay. Kay, you there was a game that's... Question. Yep, I am going to interrupt it because there was one of those postponed games that's actually just finished recently tonight. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Okay. Yeah, so no- Northbridge Bulls and Marconi have played out a okay. three or draw, which oh, wow. um, was actually quite crazy. I'm just, you know, just get a bit of a ding in the background there because I'm bringing it up. Um, Marconi were 2-0 up. Um, actually, before that, Northbridge got a red card in the 12th minute for a straight red card. Um, Marconi went 2-0 up with an extra man and somehow Northbridge came back to be score three goals, be th- leading 3-2 with their third goal in the 91st minute. So they've scored a 91st minute goal thinking that they've won a game with 10 men and then in the 92nd minute, Marconi equaled it up. So uh, crazy game. There you go. All right. Great. Now I have to update my table, Jake. Um, for the yeah, show, too. no, we're, um, we're not doing that. Jake, give me give me your top five come end of the year as quick as you can. Are we, now, are we talking about ladder or rankings? Because that's um, uh, no, the ladder. Different. The ladder. The ladder. All right. Uh, no particular order. I'll go Sydney United and Rockdale because um, I'll probably be up the top. I'll say Wollongong will make it up there. I'm actually going to go Sydney FC youth team. I don't know about that, but I'll I'll throw them in there. They look strong. Um, and the fifth one, Sydney Olympic. I'm going to go Sydney United. Rockdale, Manly, Wollongong, and also Sydney Olympic. So some okay, few differences close. there. And did you pick a game this week coming? Um, not from this league. I think there's a couple of interesting ones, but nothing that stands out as a okay. uh, particular game of the round. Um, from a, Again, from a rankings point of view, in terms of the, the closest, it looks like Arpia and Manly United, and that's mm. probably interesting as well, just to see how Arpia um, yeah. can, can respond to their early start. Try and get their first win of the season. All right, let's now go to Victoria where there's a full round. Uh, Melbourne Knights continue their awesome form, uh, beating Hume City 3-0. Uh, South Melbourne and Port Melbourne drew nil all. Heidelberg beat Green Gully 2-1. Bentley St. Albans also nil all. Avondale, uh, great result there. 4-1 winners over Dandenong City away from home. Oakley away from home beating Altona Magic 1-0. And Dandenong... Thunder, also away from home, picking up their first win, I believe, of the season. It is. 2-1 winners over East and Lions. So Melbourne Knights go top of the table, um, but there's no team that is uh, undefeated at this point, I do not believe. Oh, yep. South Melbourne have had South three Melbourne, draws yeah. and a win, but they're sitting down in sixth position at the moment. Um, Jake, have you picked a game for the weekend ahead? Yeah, this is um, a very interesting round. Actually, I've got two games that I wanted to bring up. The okay. first one was Oakley Cannons and Green Gully. Um, Green Gully obviously sitting in second. They did lose to Heidelberg, but they're up top of the table. Oakley Cannons, one of the stronger sides in the um, well, the whole country from an NPL point of view. They're currently ranked 18th, um, but they're sitting in eighth on the on the Victorian NPL ladder. So that's the first one. Um, the second one is Avondale and Melbourne Knights for, again, similar sort of reasons. Um, mm. Avondale are sitting in third. Melbourne Knights are in first, top of the table. Um, Avondale, we've mentioned for the last however many weeks, um, the the highest ranked NPL side in the country. So can uh, Avondale catch Melbourne Knights um, or Melbourne mm. Knights going to c- continue on with it? And Melbourne Knights, if they were to beat Avondale, Jake would uh, shoot a few spots up the rankings, I dare say. I think they're back in about 48th. 49th position, so they, yep. they're still catching up on the rankings. Um, but they're, if they continue this form, um, a particular big win over Avondale would see them shoot up a few a few spots, I dare say. Definitely. Yep. 
All right, Jake, we're going to touch on the Tasmanian uh, MPL. So that kicked Sounds off good. Um, over the weekend and the fixtures we actually quickly looked previewed last week. Somehow they got changed um, in the system. So we, we actually had that wrong, but I'll just run through the results. So Kingborough Lions beat Riverside Olympic 3-1. Devonport City beat La- uh, Launceston City 1-0. Glenorchy Knights beat Olympia Warriors 1-0. And South Hobart beat uh, Zebras 6-2. So... Jake, did you pick any games for the upcoming round for Tasmania? Well, Cody, you could probably just cut out last week's snippet and do this week because last oh, week I said game right. of the round was yep. uh, Devonport City and South Hobart. Well, yep. that's coming up this Saturday. So that's definitely still the game of the round for me, the mm. two top sides over the last few seasons in Tasmania uh, and both had wins in round one. You know what I love about Tasmanian MPL, Jake? They kick off at one fifteen and 3.30 their games. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they've got the climate to be able to do it. I'd love to be able to just nice one fifteen kick off, um, finish your and, game at three something, and then you got your whole Saturday night to look forward to. And on top of that, for those of us sitting at home and looking to watch as much MPL football as we can, um, Tasmanian, I, I can't remember if it's, uh, for, I assume it's Football Fed Tasmania Facebook page. I'll have to double check that, but um, all the games are streamed. So, they don't usually clash with the other states. So if you want to start your Saturday, you go to the Tasmanian League. Fair enough. Um, Jake, top 25. We'll jump on that in a second. Um, actually, no, I'll jump on it now. Have you got any movement? I, we, I have got, I do want to touch on some other leagues in a second, but let's go to the 25 for the moment. Have we had any yep. movement up in or out? We have. So Hume City, we mentioned that they were at risk last week. Well, they've um, fallen out of the top 25. They've fallen down to 26th spot and replacing them is Bentley Greens who have pushed up into into that 25th spot. Um, the other change within the 25 is Heidelberg have climbed above Campbelltown City who from South Australia who haven't actually started their season, obviously, but Heidelberg had that win. Um, so they've climbed up and they're actually – very, very close to lines from Queensland. So any mm. sort of results in the wrong way, we'll see those two swap again. But uh, Avondale, Sydney United, two out in front. Uh, and Melbourne Victory just lost tonight, Jake. So Central Coast are very, very close to finally, uh, I don't know how long it's been since Central Coast have been, been above Melbourne Victory, but I dare say it's been a fair while. Yeah, actually, I'll update this after because at the moment there's a 10-point difference between those sides. And mm. I think it finished 4-1 tonight, Cody, against Wellington, which Wellington, is yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, so that three-goal margin might be enough to see uh, victory slip further down into 11th. Jake, we had a question come through on Instagram from mpl.football. Uh, they asked that your top 10 MPL sides at the end of the season. Um, okay. So I'm, I don't know if you saw, saw that and had a bit of uh, had a bit of a think. And I just quickly jotted down some notes. Um, so I'm just going to start reading out. And if you if you don't want to commit to a team, maybe just make comment <laughs> on mine. Um, yep. So um, we'll keep it brief. But I'm thinking out of the teams in there at the moment. This is quite rough. I don't know if I've got exactly ten, but Avondale, Sydney United, Heidelberg, Campbelltown, Olympic from from up here in Queensland, Edgeworth Eagles. Rockdale, Potential Power, and Adelaide Comets, they will stay. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's eight or nine clubs. I think Lions uh, and Oakley are going to be two of the teams to sort of jump out of that that top uh, bracket. And I think to fill that last spot or two, depending on how many I I just named, uh, these are the clubs I'm thinking, Jake. Sydney Olympic, Broadmeadow Magic, Metro Stars from South Australia, Green Gully, um, and... Maybe, I think it might be a step too far, but maybe Melbourne Knights. I think they're down, in, like we said, 48. There would have to be just a mammoth season from them, just win after win after win. Uh, but they're sort of my dark horse uh, team to to make Could that. Do you, 25. Yeah, do you think I've... I, okay. One team that I didn't mention there, Jake, was Wollongong. Um, so they're probably a big team to to maybe... I, I, just, that, you think? I don't okay. think they're going to be quite there. Um, any thoughts on that? Um. I would agree with most of those. I mean, it's the thing about being up that high in the rankings, well, two things. First is once you're there, if you keep winning, you know, you, you stay there or thereabouts. Um, but at the same time, when you're that far in front of, you know, top 25 doesn't sound that incredible, but when you look at the breakdown of it, there's only, you know, two or three sides, 
sides from most, you know, New South Wales has one, two, three mm. at the moment. Only three sides from New South Wales, which is arguably, if not the strongest, one of the two strongest leagues in the country. And only three of their sides are in the top 25. And Victoria's only got um, three, I think, as well, three or four. four um, yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think being that high up, it is – quite easy to fall outside the 25 if you have a poor season and by poor I mean you know these sort of clubs if they're not making the finals um, you'll, you'll probably see them slip out so for me of the maybe I'll do it in reverse Cody instead of giving you the all of the names the ones that are currently in the 25 that I could see slipping out um, first one I'll say is Edgeworth Eagles um, so I'm going to kind of going against um, what you're saying you, you mm. mentioned Broadmeadow Magic I think Edgeworth might fall out only because the Northern New South Wales League is quite a bit lower in quality overall compared to some of the other MPLs that are up this high. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually quite a big achievement for Edgeworth to be this high. They've been so dominant for so long. All it takes yeah. is for them to not win a few games and they'll be out straight away. So yeah. I'll, I'll say that they'll fall out. Um, I might say that Adelaide Comets might fall out. I think um, Campbelltown will hold their spot, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a different South Australian team up there. Maybe a, a Metro Stars, like you mentioned, or an Adelaide mm -hmm. City. Um, other than that, I think... The likes of Peninsula and Olympic are the two from Queensland. I think will stay up there. Um, I'm trying to trying to pick something that might surprise Cody, but I think I think it's just yeah. it's going to be the similar names. Um, <laughs> maybe you'll get a Gold Coast Knights from Queensland if they have a strong season. They're just outside as well. I think Sydney Olympic will probably make it back up into the top as well. So I don't know how okay. many I've given. Probably way more than the limit to the 25. Yeah, but it's, there you go. it's a pretty unofficial top 10. But uh, there's our thoughts. If you really want it down written down a firm 10 we can do that but um you'll have to write back to us but uh thank you for the question we did have a fair few questions come through as well jake on um on instagram stories a fair um so i'll jump into that now a fair few people wanted us to cover the northern new south wales mpl which i believe does it start this week or has it started no, i'm Almost certain it's the weekend after. Um, oh, okay. Look, I'm, I'm going back through my notes from last week's show because I yeah. did write it down and I haven't rechecked it. But um, I believe you. Yeah, I, I I think because we had the Western Australian and Tasmanian weekend just gone, there was a yeah. w one week gap before we had the new ones. So sure. Um, I can't find it, but we'll just assume that, that that I'm right there. So we've got one one and a half weeks till that. <laughs> cool. Kicks off. And and also the ACT, I believe, is coming up. Uh, we had someone want, wanting to cover that. Oh. While we're on Northern New South Wales, Jake, um, I'll quickly mention a couple of comments. Uh, we had a guy write in with a bit of info. So he's saying basically the short of it is uh, Broadmeadow and Edgeworth are both looking really strong in preseason okay. uh, so with some really strong signings. And um, Damien Zane, the coach from Edgeworth, is now gone to uh, Broadmeadow Magic. Um, so Magic beat Arpia 3-0 in preseason. Edgeworth uh, beat Wollongong 1-0. Um, he's saying Maitland looks sharp, but maybe not as sharp. Um, Lambton and Weston will be also strong. So, uh, but he okay. thinks Edgeworth and Magic will be it will be very strong this year. So, they're probably the two teams. Just going off that bit of information. Yeah, right. Um, well, Cody, here you go. Uh, we're going to have to. We won't edit it. We've been made a mistake. We're wrong. It actually does kick off this weekend. I'm just looking okay. at it right now. So yeah. um, because we stuffed up, let me run through the five uh, fixtures for sure. you. Um, and you can tell me if there's any one that jumps out. So Edgeworth Eagles playing Maitland. Uh, Lake Macquarie City will play Broadmeadow Magic. Newcastle Olympic at home to Adamstown Rosebud. Charlestown Azuri against Valentine FC. Western Workers against Lambden Jaffers. Probably that opening game, Jake. What was that? Edgeworth the... Maitland, yep. Maitland, so that's, yeah, that's uh, on Saturday. Pick of the round. There you go, folks. So Northern New yep. South Wales kicks off. And so we'll have to add that to the list and um, yep. we'll have to get a bit more comprehensive here on the show. And those, I think Northern New South Wales in previous years has been live streamed through YouTube on Bar, Bar Sports, Bar TV, something like that. Um, okay. So if you're looking for that as well. Um, and Cody, you might be about to touch on this at some point, but South Australia, which is still a week away, I did see announced today that they'll be on MPL TV, all of their yep. MPL games live streamed as well. So there's way too much football for us at the moment, which is really good. Yep, these sh shows are going to get longer, Jake. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> we'll have to rein um, it in. So FFA Cup, Jake, I, I, I keep seeing a few um, different updates in terms of draws and things like that. The MPL sides are coming in in Victoria and I believe South Australia now. Um, I saw yep. out of the – I quickly ran my eyes over the Victorian uh, draw. There was only one all-MPL fixture. I believe it was Green Gully v. one of the Dandenong – I want to say Thunder. 
Um, but otherwise, all the MPL teams play teams from from below the top league there. Um, there's a bunch of Queensland games happening like this time next week, I believe, at the start of the Easter long weekend. Uh, but do you have any updates otherwise, Jake? Nothing specific. Uh, what I'll do for next week probably as we start to get closer to some of these um, games is I'll pull out the, the ones that are worth watching. But um, I think as the MPL teams start playing, that's when you'll start getting the interesting ties. The more yeah, interesting sure. ties, I should say. Yeah, and for those who are who did enter the FFA Cup tipping, we'll finally start doing some updates over there on the Facebook group um, yep. and mention a few things on here if it's applicable. Jake, we round the show out out with uh, an update from our under-23 draft pick. We picked 10 players each, start of the year. Um, well, I believe it was actually about one or two games in, but anyway, close enough. And now we're nearly done with round 13. There's still the Sydney-Perth game happening right now and, and the Melbourne-Phoenix uh, game. I'm not sure if you've updated with those points, but how are we looking for round 13? Um, so I have updated it for, for that. Um, game earlier tonight, um, but not for the Sydney and or the Perth and Sydney game, which is going on, um, which leaves a few players for me still to play. I think you've got, I think I've probably got three names left um, playing yep. right now, and you've got two, but okay. I think a few of those guys won't actually be in the team sheet. But anyway, of the, the games that have finished, uh, I'm sitting on 45 points for the week. Uh, you're on 36 which means I'm catching up a little bit, but you are still slightly in front overall. Um, a gap of about six points, so it's very close. But oh, very the big close. scorers for the round were um, I had Bacchus with 16 points. He was the biggest scorer. Um, and then I also had Tate Russell and Jake Brimmer with 11 and 10 each. Um, and then I didn't really have much else. So I had three big name or big scoring players and then nothing else. And you had, I think, nine out of your 10 players scored not a, less than 10, but they all scored enough that you, you've almost caught me. So, um, yeah. Not a bad week. Jake, I've noticed just quickly looking at the scores going back over the weeks, it's been a couple of weeks since we've had both our teams do well. I think round 11, we had both teams over 50 points. Um, round seven, we had both. Round seven, six, uh, we had both teams over 50 points. But that's it. Like lately, it's sort of like we, like last week I did well and you only got 28. This week, we're both sort of sitting around the 40, 40 points mark. It's like, um, those players, because they are young, you know, they are inconsistent and maybe that's starting to show I mean, and a few injuries as well. Yeah, and I think a few of the players, if you look back um, at, at some of my picks, the likes of Trent Bahaja for Sydney, you know, he played a bunch of games at the start and he hasn't played mm. in about six weeks now. So he's, mm. he's kind of lost his spot to Patrick Wood, it looks like. Um, and I've had a couple of other players similar and I, I know you've had one or two in there as well that um, – seem to have started well and then maybe inconsistency means that they've lost their spot or they're sitting on the bench. Um, mm. So, I mean, that's just going to happen with under-23s. And it's a, a weird season with, um, you know, the fixtures being jammed in there for some teams. So the short turnaround means, I mean, I think tonight Perth is starting some young kid I never even heard of, um, starting with B. It's not Bowman, is it? He's a Central Coast player. Something like that anyway. And it's like, where's it? I, I know nothing about him. So um, there's going to be opportunity for all sorts of players and the, and the, and the, and the teams with um, good squad depth are the teams that are probably going to be able to, to see through it. Um, all right, Jake, that's the show for now. We'll have to uh, try and – I know you've been busy at work today um, and didn't get much of a chance to get on your computer before the show and, and obviously I was busy as well. I've got to say that to you because you're my boss. Um, so we didn't really get a lot of prep in, in terms of like Northern New South Wales, but we'll have to try and try and make sure we're across most of the leagues next week and have a bit of, a little bit more preparation. But otherwise I think we did, did pretty well. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we wrap up? Uh, no, I don't think anything specific. Just looking back at the notes now, New South, as you mentioned, Northern New South Wales this weekend, and then we got the Easter break before South Australia and, and ACT at that point. Yeah, and I, actually, I've got a couple of things, Jake. Um, we had a, a few people mention they wanted to cover two people. This always seems to happen. I feel like there's a bunch of mates who just get get onto us it, in the Northern New South Wales, like the Northern League one. Um, we had a couple of messages, people wanting us to cover that. I'm not sure we'll cover it on this show just because um, we try and stick to the top leagues. But good effort, lads, for for sending us messages through and maybe every now and again uh, we might set. Uh, no, and that's not because we don't want to or it's not interesting. It's because if we do that, we just, this show will be three times as long. Yeah, exactly. And we got uh, to limit it somewhere. 
I'm sure we're losing listeners as we speak. So, um, and we're about to lose all our listeners, Jake, because I'm about to mention uh, Calandra, my team. have got, uh, if if the rain stays away and the sun keeps shining until Saturday, we, we've got Nambour and Dina uh, at their place. So we're away from home. And, and by all accounts, they were pretty decent last year and lost, one, lost some players, but uh, picked up some players as well. So they'll be probably one of the better teams up here out of the 10 teams in the Sunny Coast Premier League. Uh, they're probably one of the top three or four teams, so they'll be a tough, be a tough ass. But you never know. Cody, I'll uh, put you on the spot. Are you Cloundra, Your team? Are you one of the top three or four teams? Absolutely, Jane. Yeah. Finals time. No, I think um, people from the outside the club would definitely say no. If, if you've seen some of our preseason games, and but we're pretty confident. Um, we've got a very very young squad. Um, I'm I'm one of the oldest players, if not the oldest. Um, yeah, so it's a very young squad, <laughs> but we've, we've had heaps of people rocking up to training and that's always good. And it's a good good uh, attitude around the club at the moment, good feeling. So a bit, bit, bit of a different year for the club. They've lost most of their top team from, from previous years, but that'll be a bit of fun regardless as long as we're not doing too poorly. And I'll move, Jake, I used to be a right back and a centre back, as you well know. Uh, now I'm a centre midfield, so we'll see how that goes. Scoring goals, getting banging too, in the goals. Getting too, <laughs> getting too old to get up and down the flanks. Yeah, although centre midfield, you run a lot more than centre back, I'll say that. You don't leave the centre circle, do you? No, oh, well, that's maybe the good players, but not me. I'm, I'm yeah. just... <laughs> Bad touches, so I have, to, I have to run that that much further. But that's enough, Jake. Thanks for joining me tonight, and we'll catch everybody next week. See you, Jake. See you later. <laughs>